Here we're going to look at the High Intensity Discharge Grow Light Basics, typically abbreviated HID um, lights. These are just the basics here. <clears throat> you can see the cannabis plant here under a high intensity light, probably a high pressure sodium looking at just kind of a yellow tint. So high intensity discharge lights are HID lights, the basic types. These are used to try and replicate the natural sunlight. There's many different subcategories, such as uh, mercury vapor, HG stands for mercury vapor, metal halide, or high pressure sodium, and conversion bulbs. Two most common you'll find are metal halide, which will tend to have a more of a whiter look to the, to the light spectrum, and HPS or high pressure sodium, which have more of that yellow appearance. These HED lights and the suggested coverage area, depending on the wattage of bulb you're using, will depend on not only the coverage area, but how far away from the foliage it should be. A 400 watt covers a 3 by 3 area and should be kept about 1 to 2 feet above the foliage. 600 watt covers a 4 by 4 area effectively and should be about a foot and a half to 2 feet away from the foliage. A 1000 watt covers a 5 by 5 area and should be kept about 2 feet away from the foliage. Now, manufacturers will often state greater areas than what's quoted above, but this is assuming uh, dense plants for maximum yield. So can a 1000 watt do a 6 by 6? Probably, but not really effectively. It covers a 5 by 5 area very effectively, uh, and that's what I recommend here. High intensity discharge lights, the popular wattages are 4, 6, and 1000 watts. 1000 watts is pretty much the standard, which allows for the greatest coverage area, as we just saw. Here's a bunch of lights here, all 1000 watt double ended Gavita Pros uh, for this particular grow facility. How do they work? Well, they, pro they produce light by pressing electricity through a vaporized gas in a sealed tube under high pressure. Uh, the mix of substances in the vapor allow for different spectrums to be produced. And there are a few light bulb manufacturers, but odds are you pay for what you get. So higher priced bulbs will actually produce a better spectrum. So I'd say it's important not only to go for the cheapest light, uh, you're trying to look for one that's going to produce the greatest spectrum, because that can have a large impact on your total end yield.